It's academic is recommended as an educational and informational program for children. Academic. Hello, I'm Mike McGarry. Here's the opening round. Each team begins with 100 points. It's 10 up for a right answer, but 10 off for a wrong answer. In this round, the contestants here in the studio don't see the writing on their screens that you do at home. Team whose light is on first has a chance to answer the question. Here we go. I don't know how the expression plain Jane came about, but it does not apply here. Identify the following women, real and fictional, who share the first name Jane. First, she wrote such novels as All Right, the Centennial. Jane Austen. Jane Austen. Right. She was the third wife of England's Henry Hammond. Jane Seymour. Right. This Jane is the title character of a short All Right, uh, Centennial. Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is right. This actress, activist, and fitness expert is married to Ted Turner. Jane Centennial. Jane Fonda. Right. She was the reclusive wife of our 14th All Right, the Centennial. Jane Pierce. Jane Pierce. Absolutely. In legal cases, this pseudonym is sometimes used. Hammond, Jane Doe. Jane Doe, or Jane Roe, right. This lady was briefly proclaimed Queen of England in All Right, Hammond. Jane Grey. Yeah, Jane Grey. That's right. Ernest Gaines wrote the autobiography of this Miss Jane. Hammond. Okay, have it? Jane Quickly. Pittman. Jane Pittman. That's right. Tarzan's Jane shared Hammond. Shared the last name of the better, better known uh, writer, O. Henry Jane Porter, 10 down. This amateur detective was created by Jane Hammond. Miss Jane Marple? That's right, and there's the opening round of the Tag Academic. <laughs> it's Academic. Hey, hey, you. Brought to you by Giant Food. Giant. Fresh ideas, great value. Hey, hey, That's no. Giant. Rolling into another playoff match. Each of our teams today has already won one game. Today's winner goes to the semi-final round. So here's winner number one. It's Hammond High in Columbia, Maryland, Howard County. This turns out to be an all Howard County program today. Stephen uh, Kaltenbaugh. Hi, I'm a 14-year-old freshman, and I'd like to thank all the students that came out to sports today, especially Missy the Golden Bear. All right, Missy, as in need, is Missy Peltzman. She's the Golden Bear. Here is Zach Richardson. Hi, I'm a 16-year-old junior, and I'd like to thank our administration and teachers who are here supporting us today, as well as our exotic dancer, Jenna Kay. <laughs> all right, Zach, they love you for that. And the star of the show, Meg Tilly. <laughs> okay, Meg. Hi, I'm a 17-year-old junior. I'd like to thank our coach, Mr. Jenkins, and also the team from Howard for scrimmaging with us to help us get ready. And I'd also like to thank our parents for coming out to support us today. All right, Hammond, take a look at the screen. Each correct answer worth 20. We see first poi creeps. If you don't like Polynesian food, you can rearrange this to name what optical instrument that allows a submarine to see surface vessels. Periscope. Periscope? Right. Treacherous, seriously ill, old-fashioned. Someone who is perfidious may best be described by which of these terms? Treacherous. That's right. The sacred farce on your monitor, the paraphrased title of what major work by Dante divided into the Inferno, Purgatory, and Paradise? The Divine Comedy. That is right. L blanks and R. Here you have the first and last letters in the names of what famous Europeans? The German who began the Protestant Revolution, the Frenchman who is considered the father of modern chemistry. Lavoisier. Yeah. Luther and Lavoisier. 20, yeah, that's 40 points there. That's a double, yes. Mugwump, Mossback, Muckraker. Which of these historical terms would best fit the turn of the century journalist Lincoln Steffens, who Muck exposed civic corruption in his book, The Shame of the Cities? Muckraker. Right. If you have tears, prepare to shed them now. This statement was not made by a chef peeling onions, but by what ancient Roman who gave Caesar's funeral oration in Shakespeare's play? Cassius. Yeah, okay. Cassius. Mark Antony. So good run, though, Hammond. 260 after your part of the round. <laughs> Next winner in the first round is the team, also in Columbia, from Wild Lake High School, Matt Buckner. 
Hi, I'm the 17-year-old senior. I'll be attending Harvard University in the fall, and I'd like to thank all the students and alternates who came out to sports today. All right, Matt, and here is Matt Mugman. Hi, I'm a 17-year-old senior. I'll be attending University of Pennsylvania in the fall, and I'd like to thank Mr. Plunkett, our principal, Mrs. Na Mrs. Austin, our coach, and all the faculty members who came out to support us today. Right, good luck in the fall to both of you and Brian Hall. Hello, I'm an 18-year-old senior. I will also be attending University of Pennsylvania in the fall. And I'd just like to thank uh, friends and family for coming out and supporting us today. Take a look at the screen, Matt. Each correct answer worth uh, 10. Here we go. Uh, 20, I should say. It is 20, isn't it? 20, that's right. Robe me, rat. Rearrange the letters in this anagram to name what sort of device invented by Torricelli that measures atmospheric pressure. Barometer. That's right. Conquer, understand, forget. If someone told you he wanted to subjugate the world, he would be expressing a wish to take which of these actions? Conquer it. Of course. The myth of Drowsy Valley. Here you have a paraphrase of the title of what Washington Irving story about Ichabod Crane? The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Right. F blanks T. These letters begin and end the last names of what two men? The German scientist who developed our common temperature scale. The American admiral who won the Civil War Battle of Mobile Bay. Fahrenheit and Farragut. 40 points. Lusitania, Johnstown, stock market. Many anniversaries are happy occasions, but most people would rather forget that 1999 marks the 70th anniversary of which of these? Stock market crash. Right. Life is a great adventure. This enthusiastic quote comes from what American president? who enjoyed many adventures as a big game hunter and as a cavalry officer in the Spanish-American War. Theodore Roosevelt. He's the man. Wild Lake 240 after your part of the round. 240. As I say, our format is all Howard County all the time. Here we are in Ellicott City to meet the team from Centennial, another first-round winner, Casey Frodima. Junior, we'd like to thank our alternates, Deep, Vic, Tim, Bobby, David, and Howard. Okay, KC, Charles Lynn. Hi, I'm an 18-year-old senior. I'll be attending Princeton University in the fall. I'd like to thank our drill team and Pep Band for coming out to support us today. Okay, and Albert Luo. I'm a 16-year-old junior. I'd like to thank our principal, Mrs. Linda Middick, our coach, Mr. Rod McCaslin, and our friends and family for coming out and supporting us today. And I want to thank Dave Garris, Matt Kircher, Kristen Wilhelm, and Scott Paulus, members of the band, whom you will be hearing later on. All right, Centennial, here you go. We see first one turn. Turn around the letters in this to get what uncharged particle found along with the proton in an atomic nucleus. Neutron. That is right. Volcano, tidal wave, blizzard. Which of these phenomena is sometimes described by the Japanese word tsunami? Tidal wave. Right. The storm. This simple phrase paraphrases the title of what Shakespearean play featuring such creatures as Ariel and Caliban? Tempest. Right. E, lots of blanks, and S, fill in these blanks correctly. You name both the outer layer of your skin and the tube through which food passes on its way to the stomach. Esophagus. Esophagus and epidermis. 40 points. Jackson, Nixon, Tyler, of these three presidents, which one did not have the chance to deliver a formal inaugural address because he took office only after the death of his predecessor? Tyler. Tyler. Succeeded William Henry Harrison, is right. The South, the poor South, God knows what will become of her. These were the last recorded words of what South Carolinian, who had left the vice presidency over the issue of nullification. Calhoun. He's the man, Centennial 280, the end of the round. Each year on Attack of the Each year on its academic, Giant Food awards more than a hundred scholarship grants to help deserving students continue their educations. Because this is a playoff match, today's grants total $1,200, with the winning team school receiving $500 and each of the other schools $350. During the school year, grants to schools appearing on its academic are over $85,000, and over the years Giant has been our sponsor, they have contributed more than $2 million to participating schools. Giant Food doesn't select the individual scholarship recipients, but leaves that choice and the administration of the funds to the schools. This scholarship money has gone to help students attend colleges and universities across the country, where they study everything from accounting to anthropology, art history to nuclear engineering. We at It's Academic and Giant Food wish them all the best in the future.
happened in Columbia, Maryland, has a score of 260. 260. Wild Lake in Columbia, 240. Centennial, Ellicott City, the lead, 280. <laughs> now it's time for our all visual round. Each correct answer worth 10 to the team, but 10 off for a wrong answer. <coughs> and the team whose light is on first has a chance to answer. Let's look at number one here. Streets still pulse with activity night and day in what former British crown colony centennial? Hong Kong. That's right. Next, in Florence, you can see Ghiberti's intricately carved doors made of what alloy of copper and tin? Centennial. Bronze. That is right. Picasso named this painting the young women of what French city Avignon. centennial Avignon is right. For x not equal to 1, this is the equation of a straight line. What is its, all right, uh, centennial? Five halves. Its slope is five halves is right. You can see the determination in the face of what 16th century English queen, Hammond. Elizabeth the first? Okay. Okay. Elizabeth the first? No, I'm sorry, Mary Tudor the first, not Mary Tudor, the queen of Scots, but your answer was wrong anyway, so 10 down. This multicolored ceremonial headdress was worn by a member of the Comanche tribe of Native Americans, most of whose members are located today in what sooner state? Centennial. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Right. Entitled The Balcony, this picture was not the work of Monet, but of what other French artist? Wild Lake. Manet. Manet is right. Back in 1938, these Washington, D.C. women chained themselves to cherry trees scheduled to be cut down to build the memorial to what third centennial? Jefferson. Right. When this coin was originally minted in 1877, it was worth how much money? The equivalent of 1,000 at Nick or Hammond. Your answer. Ten dollars? Fifty dollars. Send down. No candidate for anyone's best dress list. This actor is portraying the title character in an old movie made from what Daniel Defoe novel? Wild Robinson Lake. Crusoe. That's it, and there's the end of the round. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.